To be completely honest, I'm actually a little bit speechless. Like, this chapter was incredible. It really was. It's filled to the brim with onslaught. Destructive onslaught, too. Like, and this this monster that was introduced in the, in the recent chapters, not a pushover. Definitely, definitely not a pushover. So, this thing has kind of changed, I guess, the whole perspective of the CCG and the situation right now. Because, one, for the fact that the clown said that they're buying time, right? And I don't even know if the CCG at this point can necessarily kill this thing. I guess if they all manage to team up, but just when you read this chapter and put everything in perspective, like the amount of people right now that are versing this L is what they call it. They, they literally call it, you know, Eto Yoshimura, the one-eyed L. No one is standing a chance. I like literally the only person that actually done something to this monster was Suzuya. And even then the weak point for this full Kagaja Eto monstrosity is not actually the weak spot. So we have a big predicament and just like Kaiko said, round two begins. Now, realistically, I don't even know where to begin because we just jump straight into this entire onslaught. We jump into the death and destruction of a lot of different CCG members, just fodder characters, if you will, that are completely getting obliterated by this monster. Actually, you know what? The first thing I want to mention, you know, I created a video a couple of days back talking about the possibilities of Eto being put into these relabeled capsules, right? The king capsules, if you will. And then she was most likely evidently used to either be a nucleus for dragon or is somehow connected to dragon whatever maybe not but if you look at her in this chapter right if you look at this monster and you compare it to the panel we had of armon in his full kangaja when he first came out of the capsule they look extremely identical uh the only difference is is that this one obviously is much much bigger but the structure of this monster is too similar remember how i talked about uh kagajas and kaganes and everything related to a kagane having specific traits per character you know each character has their own unique twist and trait on their Kagane and Kagaja. I mentioned that Armon's could theoretically be traitless because his full Kagaja was artificially created. It was enhanced thanks to these supposed recapsules and he wasn't even in there for long. So you can imagine if a character was put into one of those capsules for a very long time or a good period of time, they would come out extremely powerful and look kind of similar to Armon's Kagaja, a traitless monster, if you will. Now at this point, I guess it is realistically Edo. Like there's really no other way you could look at it. The fact that Suzuya managed to get all the way to Yui and everyone else that is versing this monster to actually cut its head off to reveal that it doesn't actually have a head. It doesn't actually have a weakness. Uh, it almost reminded me of Eren from Attack on Titan, like how the, the, the human bodies are kind of connected to the back of the Titans, like the back of the neck. That's exactly what it looked like to me. Except at this point, we find out that the head of the body, because we see a human body inside of the Kagaja, is not actually there. There's a massive cross coming out the neck and it's a really, really well done panel like if you're trying to build emphasis or a theme or a concept or just emotion in general this is how you do it like that panel work alone with the cross sticking out of this person's neck which is most likely Edo because you see the bandages as well and I mean let's be real bandages go hand in hand with Eto as a character so it's got to be her at this point there's no one else that I could legitimately think of that actually makes sense with what we know now this character is wearing bandages this character has their head cut off even the CCG members think it's Al or the one-eyed Al whatever it's got to be her this raises the question though because how is this possible how have they managed to control this person and i actually believe it has something to do with eto's head before this chapter came out when the spoilers released i was talking with a couple of people in my discord and uh, basically i came up with the idea that once again reliving a previous idea i came up with that eto was put inside of these recapsule these king capsules right but to evidently control these said characters so they don't actually come out and have free will is that you cut off their heads now it sounds quite absurd you know how could a ghoul live like that? You know, how could they not have a head and still be a prevalent thing? If they are in this capsule, which most likely these capsules are filled with an abundance of RC cells, whether they be Rize's or someone else's entirely, who knows? But if these capsules are filled to the brim with RC cells and they're keeping the said body alive, theoretically, maybe it's possible that a head doesn't actually have to be attached, that they could actually keep the body in the capsule with a heartbeat and the Kakaho intact, cut off the head entirely, and then build that monster from from there. Build that monstrosity to something else entirely. Now, the only reason I mention the fact that they don't need a head, maybe, is because when they cut off said weak point of the monster Kagajo or whatever, there was no head. There was a cross, like I said, stuck in the neck. Her head doesn't just vanish. Like, it doesn't just disappear. Like, they've done this. They have literally taken off her head most likely prior to when she was in this form. And I think it's probably evident to say that it was when she was in the capsule. And they kept her alive because they were pumping her with an extreme amount of RC cells in the capsule her head 
head was cut off and they could easily control her then. How do you go about getting her out and her still being alive without a head? Honestly, I don't really know, but if there's like a constant feed to it maybe, or if it's birth from Dragon, maybe they've taken her body and used it as a nucleus for Dragon as well, maybe that's a possibility. Honestly, the details that Ishida could go in when explaining the RC cells even more to what we already know is ridiculous. Like honestly, there is an endless supply of ideas for RC cells and how truly in-depth he could actually go because it's ridiculous at this point. With that being said, this monster is not going down easy. You know, Carnegie and Aizo have taken off, they're searching for a specific thing right now, they have a direction that they can go in, and then this monster is kind of just bringing the pain. It's it's doing all the damage, and it's not going to go down easy. Like, even Suzuya at this point is kind of one of the most prevalent characters to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this monster, but he's got a lot of help as well. It kind of seemed like they were building up Yui's death in this chapter because they were putting a lot of emphasis on him. Like, oh, you know, Arima's not around anymore. You're one of the strongest people here. You've also versed Al before. You've got this. You can do this and then you know you're kind of hyping up his character a little bit and i'm like you know are they are they building up yui's death at this point is he gonna get killed off who knows evidently suzuya comes in and kind of saves the day or at least kicks it off even more and now round two actually begins so they may actually be more i guess manifestations of this said monster like different forms if you will like maybe he can change a little bit more because when we seen this monster fighting absolutely everyone its attack pattern was very odd it didn't move around as much as you would like in a full Kagaja you notice that every single character moves around and they have like these unique traits and abilities this thing kind of just stood its ground it didn't really move it kind of used its arms and its appendages or whatever to slice up the uh, oncoming traffic and then it kind of shot projectiles as well and I don't <laughs> I don't now that I think about projectiles I don't want to say that maybe Shirazu was mixed in as well but that could also be a possibility if they've somehow fused Shirazu with Eto and turned it into this this abomination you've got a massive problem on your hand like maybe it's a little bit early to say that these projectiles are shirazus but you know it's an idea that you can bring up and hopefully you guys will explore it more in the comments so you never know at this point this monster itself is ridiculous so i'm excited to see how ishida plays on this war because not only is this monster the biggest thing that stands in their way kaiko is also a character that is very unusual right he's currently going up against hiriko and yusu arima and a couple of others and he's going hand to hand with them like Hiroko is not a weak character he's actually very strong for the most part Yusu Arima who is the kind of brother cousin you know family somewhat family relations he's from the same branch family as Arima right and they play on it in this chapter you know Yusu and Kaiko going toe to toe with each other and he's pushing you sir he's like you know you want to be the next Sarima are you going to be as powerful as him like and just really pushing all of his buttons you know what I mean and everyone's getting all riled up at this point Hiroko's getting riled up Yusa's is getting riled up and Kaiko's just having a laugh at this point the dude is literally just taking all of these hits as well mind you retaliating with ease he also mentions that he trained Arima quite a bit which honestly that's quite a scary thing to think of considering at this point we don't know much about the view organization we don't know much about Arima uh they did mention that Arima was obviously a traitor, so maybe there is a big connection there. We don't necessarily know all too much about Arima, you know what I mean? Like, he's quite an odd character that he never really revealed how he knew all of this information. Mind you, he knew specific information as well, to the point where he knew that humans would eventually turn into ghouls, and that, I guess, the V organization would be the ones to do it, or someone related to them. Hence why he pushed everything on to Carnegie. Now, now I came up with an idea ages back in saying that maybe he realistically ended his own life, even though he was rapidly aged was so that his body wouldn't actually be used as a weapon whether it be turning Arima into a ghoul using the transformation what they're doing now or using his body as a said massive monster I think it's an interesting thing you know it'd be a, it just added like another little noble cause to Arima but it, it seems at this point that Arima was closely connected with V maybe he even worked for the V organization and saying that Kaiko did actually train him when he was younger which is a pretty big thing so I would like to see more of that I don't know if Ishida is going going to play on a little bit more of Arima's backstory and what he truly was and how he truly was connected with the V organization, how he found out about all of this stuff, but I'm hoping he does, to be honest. I think that would be very interesting and just give a lot more reason to, I guess, be disappointed that Arima is gone. You know, there is a much bigger threat now and Arima is not here being one of the most powerful characters, so everyone else has to deal with it. And Carnegie, the other strongest character in this series, is nowhere to be seen. He's off doing his own thing right now 
now with Aoto, which which puts everyone else at a horrible disadvantage. So Clanko himself seems also immortal. The dude got his face like cut off and then he kind of just rebounded back like nothing happened. So don't necessarily know what he's truly capable of. Obviously they are ghouls. Obviously his regeneration is through the roof. The fact that his face got literally sliced off and he instantly put it back together. So at least out of Kaiko, I don't know about the other V members, but he is pretty damn strong. So at this point you got V, you got Kaiko, you've got this massive monster. There could be more, who knows? But you also got the clowns and <laughs> the clowns aren't doing nothing. Like I mentioned this before, the CCG, Carnegie's organization, are at a horrible disadvantage and we're only just getting started at this point this monster is about to go blitz it's about to go psycho and obliterate it did at the end of the chapter actually it just obliterated absolutely everyone so time is ticking before everyone gets absolutely slaughtered by this thing by the v organization by the clowns whoever and at this point i think we're going to jump back and forth i wouldn't be surprised if next chapter we solely focused on Carnegie and aito and then the next chapter we focused on this monster absolutely obliterating everyone and everything in between. But that's basically it. The bar itself has been raised extremely high. This war right now puts the CCG and Carnegie's group at a horrible disadvantage. Honestly, they gotta bring out some stuff up their sleeve. Some secret weapons, anything really. Almond's full cargager, let's go. Please, Tagizawa, Karuna. We need these characters to come back into play. We need to somewhat balance out the playing field. If the clowns come in and try to obliterate everyone, if that was what they were trying to do, everyone would be gone, right? They're just severely outnumbered, severely outpowered. So we need Tagizawa, we need Kuruna, we need Armon, we need kind of everyone full force at this point. So it's going to be very interesting to see how Ishida handles all of this stuff that's going on and how he evidently could kill off a lot of different characters right now. No one's really safe. Everyone on that battlefield is in firing line of a very big monster. At this point, it's basically Eto. I mean, the chapter title itself is literally called E.T. I mean, what else could you ask for? You got your, your answer, if you will. Yes, this thing is most likely Eto or a, a version of her. How they've managed to create her into this monstrosity, I don't know, but I'm very excited to find out and hopefully we do next week. So with that being said, I want to thank you all for watching. Let me know what you thought of the chapter in the comment section below, but I'm actually going to end the video off here. Hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. Let let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and I'll catch you guys in the next video.